the semifinals. Alrighty, well, Raynette playing Zoo. Uh, Zoo. Well, I, I was anticipating Raynette to play at Handlock because he's always talking about how much he loves Handlock. And I was almost ready to write him as like a really advantaged in game one because it would have been Handlock versus Priest, but he doesn't love his own child. Well, actually, um, he, he loves Handlock. Handlock was his first love. Oh, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I remember watching him back when he first started streaming to like 500,000 viewers. He <laughs> ran. Uh, he first started streaming. You mean 500 to 1,000? Or do you mean 500, 500 to 1,000? Zero, zero, zero. Yeah, when like he first started like appearing in like the top 10 Hearthstone stream lists. Oh, um, so like 500 to 1,000. Yeah. And okay, I thought you said that so fast that you said 500,000. Oh. Like half a million. I'm sorry. I'll talk slower. Thank no, you. but uh, the very first game that I watched of Raynad ever, it was very fitting. He was super salty because it was a handlock versus handlock mirror, and the handlock that he was playing against beat him with Sacrificial Pact. <laughs> so that's the, the olden days of it's funny. of Raynad's. It's when he first well, opened the Salt Factory. <laughs> this is unfortunate for Freeze. The, the Flame Imp here is the worst scenario because now he can't play Northshire Cleric and get the extra draw. And, uh, well, it's a pretty powerful opening. Yeah, now he does have the ah, uh, a great draw. Northshire Injured Blade Master combination and, of course, Shadow Man Nest, like you said. Fantastic against it. Two for one. Almost always. If he coins now, because he doesn't really have a play again this turn, if he coins now, he can't coin Shadow of Madness and relieve the board until turn 4 comes out. And then if turn 4, the Dark Iron Dwarf, then, uh, well, then he won't, ha won't have an effective Shadow of Madness to clear the board unless the Star Cultist lives. Oh! <laughs> what a nasty draw. Actually, I don't think there's anything better, really. No. That Direwolf Alpha allows him to buff up a minion to four attack perfectly. Yeah, I think this is... I mean, Abuse of Sergeant could be another way to deal with it, but you're wasting a damage in that situation. Well, I guess potentially. Right, because it juggles. Because it juggles. But it's worth evaluating to see if you need to Direwolf Alpha. Maybe you can get away with Haunted Creeper to make your board resilient. It would be better if that hit face, but... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, you play, really if you play the Haunted Creeper, you're stronger against the... The potential board clears from the Auchanized Soul Priest. And it also uh, has a lot of synergy with Knife Juggler. Absolutely. Just because you can throw it in and potentially get 3 damage plus the 2 one ones out of it. As long as your Knife Juggler survives. So. Well, Freyce, pretty sure he has to drop his Injured Blade Master. Now the question becomes of whether or not he wants to use Circle of Healing. Because Circle of Healing, if he uses it and then Auchanized Soul Priest is the next draw... He might be regretting a lot of choices he made in life and in Hearthstone. Oh, it's such an awkward spot because it just, uh, you know that if you just leave it at three health, it's going to get eaten up yeah. so easily. I, I think this is the definitely the right choice, though. <sighs> wow. So what do you do here if you're Rain Nad? Do you drop the Dark Iron Dwarf and what do you buff? You buff the Voidwalker, I suppose. Yeah, Voidwalker. It does it protects your creatures, but yeah. Dire Wolf Alpha and Knife Juggler represent so much potential damage. It's one of those things where if you buff a minion and then it hits the the injured blade master, the minion you wanted to trade anyways is the one that's buffed, and you don't want to necessarily do that. Yeah. Dire Wolf Alpha also keeps the buff on the Knife Juggler, so that like Shadow Word Pain can't get to it. Huh. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, well, he he taps because I, I guess he's thinking it, he doesn't want right. to waste the potential damage. Is he going to trade the knife juggler if this goes wrong? Oh, boy. But this makes it so he fills up his hand with Doomguard in it. Well, next turn he's got the Dark Iron Dwarf and Leopard Gnome. Yeah. So. That's true. So he does have a play. But if he had drawn into something clunky... Like something three plus mana, it could have been really awkward for him because he would have almost guaranteed lose a draw unless he wanted to wait a couple more turns to Doom Guard.
but he wasn't happy with, I guess, the potential of, like, losing out on damage from the Dark Iron Dwarf. I think you want to drop and draw a card here. The He doesn't have, like, Abuse of Sergeant or a clean way, so I think you need to, like, try and swing here to go for a big opportunity to seize control of the board. You can't hold out for the Soul Priest forever. Yeah. Because eventually you'll just get overrun waiting for it. So, Raynard can kill off this injured Blade Master. He also has an opportunity just to rush 7 damage to the face and put him at 10 health. <laughs> Still think it's better though to, to end up going for these trades. Or maybe, I don't know. He's still resilient to Holy Nova. It's very tough. Also, another thing he has to be mindful of is uh, Northshire Cleric drawing cards. Yeah. I think he's just all in at this point. Yeah. Oh! Oh, no! We talked about this exact thing, oh. too. Now, what's painful is I think Frey's ha might Shadow Word Death here. And um, if he Shadow Word Deaths, then the Doom Guard goes uncontested. Because how else do you deal efficiently? Well, I guess you could use Holy Smite and then crash into a Dark Iron Door. Yeah. <laughs> you could... Uh, uh, Shadow Madness, the... No, that wouldn't work. So yeah, can you Shadow Madness anything? You Shadow Madness the Voidwalker... But then you wouldn't be able to kill off the Voidwalker unless you threw it into the... Yeah. Uh, Dark, Dark Iron, Iron Dwarf, Dwarf, and then that would just be wasting the damage. Because you would throw the injured Blade Master into the Dark Iron Dwarf. Ah, uh, so complicated and awkward. And... There ha yeah, this is a very complicated puzzle. Okay, so. I mean, you Shadow could. Shadow Madness. <laughs> the Haunter Creeper. Yeah, you get the Holy Smite as well. Yeah. But this way you can clear uh, everything but the Dark Iron Dwarf. Right, but that's actually game. Because <laughs> the Dark, the Doom Guard. Unfortunately, it is. Yeah, that's the best chance that he had, but... I guess if we t had a minute or two to evaluate, maybe we could find something marginally better by a point or two, but Reynad just takes a very simple and easy game one, and it comes down to the sequencing and combination of Freeze cards. Um, you have the Auchanized Soul Priest in the clear, your win rate jumps up like... Phew. Yeah. yeah. But again, you can't hold out for it forever. Because exactly, right? It's one of those things where I was talking about, like, you have how long can you hold on to it? And he had an opportunity to draw into cards and maybe Fatigue Mage. The Cold Light Oracle is what gave it away. Um, and he is playing Farseer, so it is more akin to the original version that Freshka submitted. I know that, for example, one of the think cards that was rotated in was Alex Straza from okay. Colento. Colento wanted to play... Alex Straza in this deck to help extend, uh, you know, its damage. Yeah. Also, Alex Straza is godly in the mirror. <laughs> I don't know if how often you run into Fatigue Mage mirrors, but Alex Straza is like the card you want. I run into Fatigue Mage mirrors in my nightmares. That's gotcha. when it happens. Yeah. So uh, this deck is really hinged upon making sure it can draw uh, into all of its stall and make sure to basically kill every single thing possible. It's already important that Raynad has both of his Big Game Hunter and Polymorph because one of the cards that gives this deck a very hard time is Ragnaros. My control tech as well. Makes sense. Probably Please. replace one of the Farseers with it. Yeah. Fatigue Mage is also a deck that aligns everything two by two. It's very common for it to um, just simply have two copies of everything and then yeah. like one of two cards. Because they have very distinct purposes. Right, right. So. It's like you want two heal bots, you want two sludge builds, yeah. you want two flame strikes. Exactly. Freeze, of course, I think he's making a read that this might be Freeze Mage or Fatigue Mage. Either way, he wants to start racking up the armor. It's not as important to drop Armor Smith and control the board yeah. compared to getting the opportunity cost of getting the two armor every turn. Uh, I think at least gaining some armor every turn is your main goal when you're playing any type of slower mage. And are you really worried about the armor counts as Fatigue Mage? Um, yes and no. Yes in the sense, of course, you want to keep it as low as possible. Yeah. No in the sense that your, your objective isn't to, like, play around the shield slams. 
or or, yeah, or to like keep him at a low health. Fatigue, like Warrior will fatigue faster than Mage by about five cards. Um, and if you try to catch up to that damage, assuming you can keep it at an equal health, yeah. like he Alex draws you, you heal back up. Yeah. You're still gonna be okay because uh, you know that's just gonna be way too much damage to catch up fatigue wise. But at some point, does it just get to the point right. where the warrior just has so much effective health that it can? It can. It just I don't think it'll get to that. Yeah. Point. The game's often decided before that. Yeah. And with the echo of Medivh, a lot of times the, the fatigue mage just uh, your cards just go so far. I mean, you yeah. can end up having by the end of the game like five or some right. potentially six of any given card that that you'd like. Anti heal bots later in the game, uh, BGH. Yeah, BGH is a card that I think you definitely want to duplicate or echo. Yeah. Um, just because there's so many targets in Warrior, there's Doctor Boom, Ragnaros, Alexstrasza. Most likely, Warrior will have to use Gromosh suboptimally in some way. Baron uh, as well. Baron uh, You know the uh, the occasional other legendaries that might pop up too that have a lot of attack as well. So. It, yeah. That card goes so far. Yep. So, so far. This is a little awkward. Like, Freeze. Freeze doesn't really have, like, that strong of a pressure. Like, what you want to do against this deck is pressure as best as you can. Yeah. But there's not really anything worth pressuring. <laughs> it can be really tough to play against sometimes. Fatigue Mage can. Like this is what I love about fatigue mage specifically. It's it's definitely on the slower of decks. You know, it's not the flashy. It's by not, nature. Yeah. Fatigue. It, yeah. It's not pretty. Um, but it's it's hard to play and it's hard to play against. It's hard to see optimal decisions. Mm -hmm. You have you really have to plan on next turn too. It's even more than just like, well, do I blizzard and push or, or something like that? It's it's more of like. What do I want to echo? Like, what do I want to... Like, what do I want to do next turn with 7 mana? 7 mana, I could big game Hunter a target and echo a Vadiv something. You know, it's... Like, I can big game Dr. Boom. I think that's something he has to think about. I might be okay with just a hero power pass. Again, this deck is pretty new, so it's hard to figure out what's optimal. But yeah. I, well, I'm pretty sure this is right. Well, Blizzard just on one creature. Yeah. Polymorph, yep. if you want to save that. The only thing I was also considering was dropping just a flat out Doomsayer. Okay. Yeah. But um, I feel like that's pretty weak. Like, you already have D Blizzard, so you don't need to do that. And you would be losing creatures as well. Right. One problem that does end up coming up occasionally is having too many cards, and Echo of Medivh actually just, like, doesn't fit <laughs> uh, yeah. in your hand. Oh, he plays two Polymorphs. Okay. That's so much removal. With the potential for like three, four, five, six BGHs, yeah. double polymorphs, um, doomsayers. I, you know, with the mind control tech and a second polymorph, I don't think Raynad's playing ice block. Okay. Ice block was a way for you to handle, you know, aggression, and you had illuminators that way you can combo it. Yeah. It felt pretty strong, um, especially against aggressive decks. Yeah. But polymorph is clearly like an anti aggro measure, so. Or sorry, anti-control measure. Yeah. Uh, illum illum illuminator is the aggro. aggro. Yeah. So Raynad predicting a, if that's true with his deck choices, he's predicting a slower tournament metagame. Well, Hyped uh, did warn him of it. In the team chat right before, he was like, for some reason, everyone keeps playing Warrior. Well, Hyped didn't have <coughs> that great of a week last week. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was his second week back. He did make it to the finals the prior week against his teammate, Magic Amy, but one of the few players to bring Rogue sure. over the course of the entire eight weeks. I like it. Yeah. Definitely one of the best Rogue players in the world. But So you're always it. scared of drawing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know that your opponent has the ability to Cold Light Oracle and then make you overdraw. Uh, it's, not, it's scary for Mage 2 in a sense because Mage is like, well... I might make you draw into really powerful cards, but you know yet your hand is full of situational cards. 
In fact, like, for example, you can't, like, use Execute. It's just gonna be sitting there until you want to use it on a really small minion. So if you draw, if you get, end up, uh, Kulite Oracle, and you, like, overdraw your Alex Straws and whatnot, you're gonna be in big trouble. It's a good draw. He really wants to armor up, though. But yeah. I think Sludge Belcher just makes a lot of sense. He actually, I think he thought about for a second actually using Cruel Taskmaster on his Acolyte, but that would have been... I don't know. I wonder what was the value of using Echo of Mediv on the previous turn for Raynad, because I guess when you have duplicates and Echo, it's o it's a little overkill, but it didn't feel like high value. Or it, maybe it didn't even feel, maybe it was right, because you just, you have things to do, because his hand is very reactive and nothing else. Yeah. And at this point, he has to find something to play. Yeah. And nothing feels great. Yeah, I guess at this point, he... He echoed just so that he have things to do and minions to drop and ways to relieve pressure other than taking damage. Engaging TC yeah. Is he paying the acolyte? Uh, I don't think so because he's only holding seven cards. So unless you're gonna overdraw even, him, yeah. Even if he maxed him, drew. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Great. This this the deck's pretty hard to yeah. play. Like, you, you you could be right. You could be like you want him to draw max in many ways. You're gonna go to fatigue. Yeah. I don't even understand dropping the doomsayer here because I think he just wants him to get execute out of the way. Yeah. Or shield slam because he had seven armor perfectly. I think you uh, you want to especially since this deck is newer. Yeah. You want to force the toughest decisions possible. Yeah. And even if you're not. If you just ignore the fact that you're getting him closer to fatigue, that you're trying to make him draw as many cards as possible, giving him more options to think about can sometimes be an advantage for you, especially in your deck because your deck is so reactive. You're not really worried about him like drawing into a key piece of removal or like drawing into a big threat because you know you have ways to deal with it. Giving him more to think about and maybe more cards to make forces him to make a well. A more cards is like to. very clear within the game plan. Um, just because, like we said, Warrior's going to be so much deeper into Fatigue, where even if he has 20 armor, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It's about, like, you making sure you don't die. Ragnaros is an important draw, but like we said, Reyna has two or three answers to it, so it'll be perfectly fine for him. Potentially uh, more if he decides to use the Echo. I don't know about this. Dropping a second Acolyte is asking for the business. <laughs> you've, you've adopted that saying now? Okay. Well, like... Oh wait, I forgot about Doomsayer. Oh, of course. Okay, never mind. That's pretty smart then. So he drops the he drops the acolyte because he didn't want to draw any more cards. That's actually a very smart dump. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the the entire uh, bod set mm -hmm. over the course of the day yesterday. I I gotta admit, man, it's pretty it's pretty hard to cast this deck in general because it really is. It's so new. It's very unconventional. It's a completely different playstyle, and I've I've already logged in. A fair 25 games yeah and you think that's not a lot but these games take that's forever like, that's like two weeks that's like four that's like 12 hours of solid gameplay with this deck yeah i, I watched trying to like pick up some notes or what you guys you and Raynaud <laughs> were talking about really last week hard and uh, it, it was just it was so tough to take anything away from it because even though like you're providing good analysis it, it's still there's always other decisions and you don't know because sometimes you get to the point later in the game where even you lose, even if you lose later on, it's hard to pinpoint where you went wrong yeah, exactly. in your losses. Um, yeah, it's actually one of those decks where you might seriously contemplate recording your VODs and then uh, going back and watching. Yeah. Well, uh, whatever target here gets Dr. Boom targeted by Beat Big Game Hunter, and Raynad also has a uh, duplicate up. He has to be careful not to activate. The do secret, though, um, on his turn. Mm -hmm. So, Phrase might just never acknowledge Big Game Hunter. He might never kill it. Oh, more damage. <laughs> In the end, it doesn't matter too much. Oh, well, it could, but. Is he okay with duplicating either tar targets he drops? I suppose this is definitely the best scenario, though. It's almost unavoidable too, because 
because like if he drops Ragnaros, that's one of the things he has to be worried about. Yeah. And this is a really awkward scenario. This is very well done by Reyna to set up a duplicate BGA scenario. And with the second ticket death spite plus a boom bot, like it's very likely. No matter what, like even if he has to use that death right. bite to clear something else, that I mean Reyna can do something like ping his own big game hunter. So that way the death spite kills it off no matter what. This is true. Um I mean that's that's really creative. I'm not sure if that's the best play because you know, it's it's very situational and not optimal. But well, you said it earlier, BGH is one of the, probably one of the most important targets yeah. to Echo or to... Well, here's also so annoying, duplicate. because if you play around Duplicate by not acknowledging Big Game Hunter and forcing him to kill it, he just Echoes, and he has another Big Game Hunter. Whoa. And then there's two Big Game Hunters on the field. Yeah. I think realistically what we might see... Oh, never mind. Well, I was just yeah. thinking, realistically what we might see is that uh, he's going to play Sludge Belcher, Armor Up, and like Pass. And then uh, Raynad would play like a minion duplicate and just have like an insanely powerful. Yeah. Well, He's yeah. also going to overdraw, I think. Alright, Frostbolt, not the worst discard, actually. Yeah, I don't think he'd be really upset about that. And that Baron Geddon, I mean, basically just died for free. Yep. And, and plus, it gave him a BGH. Well, two. Well, since he. Yeah. Now, now he can't. Now he knows he can't play Ragnaros again. Cause yeah. It's like, Having three big game hunter in your deck is actually unfair. Yeah. Like against Warrior. <laughs> and p potentially having four, maybe five, maybe even six. Well, he already used a, a, another Echo, so. The oh, most okay. he can have right now would be. Oh, I guess he could. F you're, you're right, he could have six. Yeah, yeah. I think Savish had a game where he had five. Savich is a madman. He was like, I love this deck. It's so good. It's probably going to be like a staple for a long time. I was like, oh god. I it was like that. four in the morning for him or something like ridiculous. Yeah. And he's sitting there like, blind pick, queuing up fatigue mage. Twice in a row. Twice in a row. Man mode. Crazy, crazy man. I mean, it's it's definitely a deck that rewards a lot of skill. No one will argue that. But of course, uh, what people will argue is whether or not they can stay awake during the match. <laughs> Distract yourself. The good news is it looks like Reynad just woke up as the sun is still out for him. But Freyze is in the UK. He's the only non-American player. So it, the night will go long for him. Yeah. And I wonder if Fatigue plays a, car, uh, plays a card in more ways than one. Yeah, it's not called Fatigue Mage because you win by card fatigue. It's <laughs> you win by player fatigue. You yeah. just have to have more you, you endurance. Can, you can definitely part ways with the Polymorph here considering that... Uh, you have another big game hunter. And you know that the, th the threats, yeah, like you said, the, the most of the other threats you're going to deal with are BGH threats. Yeah. And I think he's also realizing maybe I played a little bit too conservative with card count mm -hmm. um, because I started overdrawing. Like, as much as losing Frostbolt wasn't a big deal, he needs to make sure not to overdraw on those things. Uh, also, we're getting about to the last third of the decks. And Cool Light Oracle will accel accelerate those things. What I'm looking for as the key to this rest of this game is how Raynad uses his Echo of Medivh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if he can use it and land on a Cool Light Oracle, or Oracle becomes 11 point burst damage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> later like, on in the game. Where they draw 5 and 6, and then they dr take the 7 point damage, so that's 18 points of damage that you take. And you're still taking like 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. you know. How close are their card counts right now, though? It's about 13 to 9. Okay. Yeah, so that was why uh, killing off that Acolyte was a really heads up play from Phrase earlier. Because that's just a card that would sit in his hand that he cannot play. Yep. So instead of having the possibility of milling it or mulling, like burning cards, he just decided to. Yeah. Very smart. One thing that's also been unfortunate for Phrase is that he hasn't been able to. Um, he hasn't been able to draw Alex Straza yet. And Raynan has to keep that in mind too. Like, if his opponent has Alex Straza, he needs to save a heal for that scenario too. Yeah. Well, especially if he uh, if he cut, cuts Ice Block, because right. a lot of so, well sometimes you can find yourself in a situation where if an early Alex comes out, um, you you're put into a situation where you're forced to heal and not do anything else. Right. Sometimes you can just die anyway. It's okay now because he has duplicate up. Yeah. So uh, antique heal bot. We'll be all right. So we can make sure he, 
he does have heals later on for the Alexstrasza. Wow, Reynad's summoning all of his brain power. <laughs> you could see his furled brow. <laughs> it's a really hard deck. It's it's not something to be rushed at all. You really yeah. have to think through a lot of things. And you're playing this just because of lack of a better option, in my opinion. Yeah. Karen is a problematic card, though, for sure. I didn't know Phrase was playing Karen. A great choice, though. I think great, uh, Karen is really powerful in the current metagame. Polymorph is pretty great against Karen. But there goes the second Polymorph. I mean, he still has removal. He's probably not, might not be expecting the second Polymorph in this situation. Right, but that's where, like, you know, silence on the Karen is okay, too. Uh huh, yeah. Silence, Blizzard, uh, DMC. Wait, do you want to sequence it that way? If you Blizzard first, you can't silence it. Uh, maybe he has. He's gonna play Explosive Not Sheep instead. Yeah, silencing it first makes sense. I'm still gonna be a little bit. Well, right. no, not necessarily. If he had just done the explosive sheet play, it would have been a little awkward, but... I personally like copying Doomsayers. Um, just because... I think they're so powerful, because if pe eventually people run out of ways to deal with it. But it seems like Raynan instead values having minions to do things, and... Having utility. Like, he uses Echo mm -hmm. on a mind control tech and a Farseer, so that way he can put it out his hand. Yeah. And then, um... And sometimes Doomsayer later on can... Uh, just oh. buy you a turn. He holds. Oh my god, this deck requires so much discipline and patience. <laughs> I like why would you hold? I mean my the prediction rate on this deck is so low for most casters, it's really difficult. Like Rain I was casting it too, and so Vs would do like a lot of things backwards from what we were saying. Yes. Yeah. People have their different styles and what they think is right. Also, with an Iron Beak Owl, I wonder if Raynad's playing like Frost Nova. Or it, but maybe he took out Cone of Cold. Maybe Cone of Cold's not included. But, like, he's had to have cut on some freezes and stalls. Because he's really valuing these blizzards. So that makes me think that because he's overvaluing the blizzards, yeah. he's he's not having as many freezes as normal Fatigue Mage. Cone of Cold can be a little bit awkward. Because if you, uh, a lot, if you get to a point where your opponent knows that you're playing Cone of Cold, yeah. they can play around well it with around positioning. It. So it's one of those, those cards that I think it's a little bit better when people don't know that you're playing it. Yeah, I agree. Is he going to drop Ragnaros? Eventually he has to do something. He, he can use Ragnaros. start putting pressure somewhere. Oh my gosh. No. Well, he way. still knows that second BGH is there. Yeah, exactly. So maybe he wants the BGH to go on the Alex. Yeah, that's actually a good point. But then he, he's got to know that like a second Echo is going to come. Yep, it's going to be a big game under Echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so tough to play around. No Alex Straza again. This is very unlucky for Freeze, I have to say. Five cards left in his deck as well? Uh, Yeah, just around there. Five, six cards. and Could be the very no last Alex card Straza. in his deck. I just, it's just so tough to, to think here because your your hand is full of removal that you just know you're not going to get much use out of. You're going to use a shield. He also has to dump some stuff too. Like you have to dump so that way Colite Oracle doesn't make you burn. Because if Raynad gets Colite Oracle, I'm pretty sure that he'll have an opportunity to mill if his opponent holds nine cards here. I don't know if you can pass that up, right? No. Because he hasn't used shield slams, he hasn't used executes, you know, and you know that your opponent has to be sitting on, like, Brawl by now, so there's a lot of situational cards. I mean, Raynan looks really comfortable, this is... I mean, he looks, <laughs> looks like he's ready to go take a nap, but... He looks like Raynan. I mean, he's the one who brought this deck. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe regretting his choice. Why wouldn't you play Armorsmith here? He's curious as to why he just armored up pass, but I mean that's kind of what he has to do at this point. Yeah. Maybe that's why Raynad brought Zoo to sort of offset the 
to, the to of average time. out the yeah, match yeah. length. I mean, he just didn't care about reads, about the meta. He just said, you know what? Raynad, you are a dirty man. <laughs> <laughs> so Doomsayer, because it kills off Alex Straza anyways, if the opponent has it. Antique heal bot, because he doesn't have anything else to do. He's at 10 cards. Flame Strike on an empty board. All of these don't look very appetizing. <laughs> Explosive Sheet to gain 3 health. It's basically a farce here. Wow. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah, because he can't, like... Still no Alex Straza. Well, Shield Man, it's pretty good. It's not going to draw a BG. Oh, it's yeah. not going to get killed by BG. It's, it's effective health gain, but... Flame strike on the shield maiden. It's probably the best choice. I mean, he could blizzard yes, doomsayer as well. He has a well. second flame strike. Yeah. Does he really? Oh, uh, this deck usually runs two flame strikes. Okay. You know, it's a good point. Maybe he's running only one. Maybe he cut a flame strike. The thing is, the deck is very precise on how it's built on its absolute defense. You might have to replace flame strike with something like. <laughs> It wouldn't be like, instead of Flame Strike, you play Owl. You have to play like, instead of Flame Strike, you play like a Polymorph. Because you need like the same amount of slots to do the same thing. You need to be removed. Yeah, well, that's possible because you said um, sometimes these decks do only run one Polymorph. Oh my goodness. <laughs> is it the last card? No, Alex Strauss. This is just so bad. And I'm like, the funny thing is, I think uh, Raynad is starting to catch on to like how. It unlucky he's getting because yeah. like Phrase is not having Alex Strauss. He's been holding cards, effectively passing and playing only from the right side of his hand. Well, I think this this part of the game right now for Raynad is pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's because just he knows defend. exactly what cards exist in in Phrase's hand right now. So Phrase, cheap, he can't avoid around big game hunter unless he just wants to pass this turn. If Alex right. Strauss is going to come. It's just going to get BGH'd again. What's worse is um. Wow, this deck is so crazy. The mage deck, I'm saying. Yeah. As cr as crazy as Control Warrior is, we both know that I'm a big lover of Control Warrior. You are. Oh man, a pass. Wait, 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 wait. When your beloved deck really just gets here? wrecked, you might draw some whirlwind just to avoid milling. Okay, I think that's really smart. So that way you can avoid Colet Oracle ruining him. And then this like gives Raina just to drop Sludge Bill. You're like, there's no reason not to. You just start working on the armor. And what's the best part is, it sets up for an, a, a better Echo of Medivh in the next couple turns. So mm -hmm. you need to spend a little bit of mana. Uh, you often Echo is a little bit awkward. That's why I think Echo is pretty balanced, because it's rather expensive for a draw card. But uh, you can play around it by like setting up powerful turns. And some of the decks that it's strong with a lot of times have a pretty big hand already. Yeah. So you have to ma also oh, make sure... Oh, he's going to echo right now. I... Uh, okay. Well... I wasn't expecting that. He does have Polymorph. So, I mean, he does have removal. But now right. he's not going to be able to... I mean, that's both duplicates gone and both echoes gone. Yeah... Yeah, there's a second flame shark. Okay. I am a little interested, by the way. Anyways, he saved the antique heal boss for this very specific purpose too. The sludge Bolt is going to be pretty good as the game progresses, but really not that good because it's another. It's giving him value for his like sh shield slams or anything really. A higher value target. Yeah. It's a very good point. I think he still has the advantage either way. But. Maybe. I think Phrase has two cards left. How does he deal with Gromash? I guess he can just flame strike Gromash. I know that sounds stupid, but. No. Uh, there's also Coolite Oracles remaining in the deck. We saw one. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's very true. Be a Pyroblast later on. A spell powered Pyroblast, even. <laughs> Maybe even more. Even a Malagos I mean, it, uh, it, uh, it often becomes like the point where um, Warrior just runs out, and they might for they might concede. They might concede before yeah. actually gets to the board. It's pretty easy to calculate. 
I have well, no cards. Second big game hunter or third big game hunter has been used. No more duplicates, no more echoes. Brawl you could, I guess you could use it. What else are you gonna use it on? Raynad actually doesn't have to do much either. He can just attack and and wait on it. Oh yeah. Death Lord. Yeah, he can just sit on this because uh one he knows his opponent has a brawl, but two, <laughs> mind control tech is so popular. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't want to give your your opponent any ability to play right into it. Yeah. Warrior is a pretty refined deck, and I'd say out of the controlish classes now um, that could run mind control tech, I think Warrior probably the least likely. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I've seen players drop shield block, uh, one shield block for other things, since the deck has a lot of card draw innately. And with shield maintenance, you don't need as many ways to deal to to build armor. So I think you can save this Colite Oracle. There's no, he's not going to overdraw. You can just simply use it as a way to nuke your opponent, or if you're out of answers, so you just keep hero powering, make him feel desperate enough to uh, utilize <laughs> some of his removal. And with no cards remaining, the ultimate Death Lord value, because it can't even pull anything. Yeah. I think he executes one of these minions here. Or shield slams. Oh. Whoa. I would I feel really unsafe <laughs> about losing more armor. How much armor could you possibly lose in this situation? Right. Raynan right knows that Phrase holds bit Ragnaros, right? Ragnaros is just one of the hardest cards to deal with and you have to have that polymorph. He also has another Death Lord in his deck. What to do? What to do? Yeah, cool Oracle. Okay, he might pick up another Death Lord. <laughs> Black Knight could be problematic. Almost out of cards. In his hand. Well, phrase. <laughs> he knows. Uh, this can feel so bad. So he really doesn't play Crossbow. Oh, what is his last card? He already drew his Cold Light and his Death Lord. Any guess on his last card? Is it weapon removal? <gasps> oh no! Oh no, that's really bad! <laughs> Tune in next time! Yeah! <laughs> so the game actually is still going on. Yeah. Okay, Just gotta so wiggle that mouse every once in a while. Alright, here we go. Ragnaros. Shooting Death Lord. But nothing came out, so it's a spell. So Reyna didn't mill any extra cards, which is important. The Polymorph finally does come out, which is really, really good. And he gets to clear the board. It's pretty good. He gets to clear the board and kill off um, Sylvanas. And uh, these guys are both out of cards. Let's let's not get too wild here. Doesn't he want to kill Sylvanas off? These creatures aren't green. They might just be a a little bit of a speculation. Oh, issue. I think, no, no, I think. Okay, there we go. Now they're green. <laughs> this could be a metaphor for life. Oh, he's going to Frost Nova it. Okay. If yeah. he does this. If he plays Cool Light Oracle. Sometimes it can feel like you have a full deck, but really you're just out of cards. That was a really deep life metaphor. I like that Raynad has uh, kept a Frost Nova in this deck too, so it looks like he is playing one of them. And that's his last yeah. card, despite those full yeah, appearing Yeah, it's, it's the final trump card. I also like that um, he's trying to get as much damage in with these minions. Like, the reason why he's not going for a trade into Sylvanas is he feels like he can get three damage out of these minions. Yeah. So now Gromash comes out. Uh, let's see, how does Raynad go from here? He can just Frost Nova and ping the Gromash, and the next turn he can Flame Strike, throw the Cold Letter Oracle in, and ping it for for the kill. It's a way to clear the board, and you're still getting extra value out of that Cold Letter Oracle. And you can actually anti kill bot as well. Right. He has to know that his opponent also has executes available too. And Phrase is also being very smart. Like he should keep that execute for. Um, 
dupes there. Phrase is at three fatigue damage, right? Yeah. No, four. He's at four, I think. We'll be taking five, six, and he'll be taking 18 fatigue damage next turn. If Rain, I can just stall long enough. Yeah, he's, he's still, what, four? F no, five turns ahead. Uh, four turns ahead. Four turns ahead. So this is most likely going to get executed, but it's okay because he can still play the Death Lord and uh, ping. And, like, as long as... Even if the... D uh, I guess he doesn't want to play Death Lord in case it does pop. Uh, it's a catch-22. He knows executes are available. Hmm, five damage. Actually, I think that's game. Yeah, it is game take no matter six, what. Seven. Because um, now he's gonna he's gonna be taking an average of steps. So 21 damage. That cold light does 21 damage worth. He's gonna be taking six, seven, and then eight. Plus the yeah fatigue from the right. falling turn. And then um, you just you just attack him twice, and that's game, right here. Very very cool game, but <laughs> very long to say the least. And this is what we're saying: how uh, the mage deck and warrior is a pretty tight one, but looks like Rainhead will end up prevailing and going up 2-0. Jesus. <laughs> Phrase looks slightly frustrated. And you know what? Actually, Rainad looks slightly frustrated as well. This deck is infuriating to play against. Yeah. Because it's like you can't do anything. They just keep stopping you every I, single time. I really don't think there's much of a winner in that situation. Well, I mean, you know, Rainad wins, so I think he's pretty happy with that. Oh, Amaz. Amaz. Uh, I, I wasn't sure because Pimping Ho um, actually isn't coming back. Tomorrow. Oh, because he's already qualified. He already qualified. Gotcha. So we extended an invite to World Champion Firebat from Archon. Awesome. And so Amaz and Firebat will be there. Two members of Tempo Storm, maybe a third. That'd be like a cr pretty good rivalry. You do also have Savitz and Tice. And um, yeah, it's just a really great lineup overall. Yeah, and though. tomorrow a lot is on the line as well because there's, uh, I don't think any of those players that are playing tomorrow have any chance of qualifying through points. So it's basically just a winner takes all. Exactly. Nobody besides the player that wins gets anything, but maybe a tiny bit of glory if they make it to the semifinals. Yeah. That's well, it's not enough for players of these caliber. Yeah. So Paladin has double knife juggler. And Trace does have uh, Feral Spirits, but, oh, uh, it's Be so painful to use Crackle on this. Yeah, I think if you have Lightning Storm, you just, just wait, just wait, because what is a Paladin going to play that's on turn two or three that's going to be beyond your reach with Lightning Storm? Well, if you coin out Knife Juggler, you're anticipating a Shielded Mini Bot, most likely. Or a second knife juggler, but I don't think or you're really second anticipating knife that too much. Crackle. Oh boy. Well, he goes for it. Rolls four. It doesn't really matter. It was guaranteed kill. <laughs> Shield mini bot is great too. It's extremely resilient. Yeah. Feeds directly into what Freeze was expecting, anyways. Knife juggler does have a lot of return on value, though. But I think this is much better. <laughs> Do you think uh, knife juggler would be better in that situation? Uh, I think. It's just too weak to like a rock biter or you know, the shield mini bot is very resilient, it's so strong. But would you have used a rock biter in the last turn? I guess, I suppose not to better eh. fit the curve to be able to play something on turn three. Right. It's tough to say. <laughs> it, it it's could be tough to pass up the opportunity to get like double juggle next turn with shielded mini bot or uh, hero power and then zombie chow. Right. <gasps> Oh, Whoa. it's a Maligo Shaman deck. I was wondering. I was like, I haven't seen Thanos in this deck in a long time. Yeah, I was going to say, Shaman. it's very spell heavy. Spell oh, this heavy. is really cool. This is really, really cool. I know Europeans really like Shaman as a class, but I wasn't expecting Maligo Shaman to come out. Good yeah. stuff, Braze. Good stuff. It's cool to see all the different regions have different play styles. Or different deck choices, I guess, is the, the way to say it. I guess if you're Rain, there's nothing to just stop you from just hero powering and passing. You don't want to like overextend onto the board too much. Mm -hmm. And this is just what Paladin does. It just bullies with its hero powers. One ones against zero twos. Doesn't seem very fair. Nope. 
And this is, of course, uh, good for Raynad too, because he needs to buy time. His hand's actually not that great, and the quality of what Shaman has is actually quite good if it can uh, continue to rattle off. I guess you just cash in on one of those 1-1s, one -ones, don't you? Yeah. Go back to the drawing board just to keep hero powering. And then, But then, how would you answer a fire level mental? I mean, he has <laughs> a second so, quality, but... Yeah, he's playing a quality so he can keep up the tempo and, and board control. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everything would have died to Lightning Storm regardless. What's funny is he's not expecting something like Mali goes to come out. And he's getting so much time. Like, Paladin's playing it so slow. Because, uh... Well, Rena doesn't have anything better. You know what the Shaman deck reminds me of? What does the Shaman deck remind you of? <laughs> I think you Don't know. Don't say Control Ward. <laughs> Control I will stab you. <laughs> Knife Juggler Defender here. Reminds me a lot of Control Warrior. <laughs> kind of awkward. I, I'm, I'm still... Hmm, I'm still wondering what's the best play here in this turn. There's not really a way... You can't play around like a Fire Little hmm. Mental turn. <laughs> I mean, you could just lay a naked Block Knight. Really? Alright. See how yeah, this works out. Wow, two juggles to the Whoa. face. I think he was hoping for anything but that. Yeah. Hoping for a little bit better of a way to clear out these uh right. These creatures on board. So uh I guess now he realizes he's extremely weak to lightning storm. Yeah. I think he was hoping to maybe even preserve the shield on the shield as minibot. Right. To have some way to play around. If one juggle had gone to that no wish inventor, would have been a lot cleaner. Well, uh, there's no reason not to clear the board here and seize back control. Shaman's been biting cards. And Raynad's actually really hurting for draw here because he, he played a lot of his weaker minions. There we go. That's a really good card to draw right now. He just used Lightning Storm. That's, that's a top deck right yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. To be honest, I don't see many golden muster for battles. It's really cool. It really is. The animation on the card is pretty nasty. And it's, it's the poor man's golden portrait. It's golden, it's golden portrait. hero powers. That's the best part about yeah. it. Yeah. Or sorry, silver hand recruits. So, I don't actually know. Any like, I guess. Guess you just draw, but I don't really know what's the primary win condition outside of Mali Ghost. Like, if you Mali Ghost and you're just trying to burst him down, is there Alex Straws in this deck? It's possible. I mean, it has a lot of core shaman cards, and a lot of times shamans can win without like their primary win condition. Yeah. Like shamans that run like Doomhammer don't necessarily rely on Doomhammer to win in games. Ray is realizing that he probably should have drawn first, which is a small sequence here. Tyrion off the top is really powerful to have later on. Black Knight against uh, Feral Spirits is pretty much the best that he can have asked for. How do you follow that up, though? You're just going to be hero powering? Yeah. All right. I mean, he can clear off the second one. Yep. Preserve uh, he'll have one of the tokens. two Yeah, with the hero power for the end of the turn. Not too bad. Can't ask for too much, quite honestly. Hey, he does have Lay on Hands for... To reload. To reload later on. Shaman's still sitting at a really comfortable card count, though. Lava Burst. I think the Lava Burst might start setting off alarms. Double Lightning Bolt. It's not good. He plays Double Lightning Bolt, Crackle, and Lava Burst. Good for you, Freeze. Good for you. If Malgos lives one turn, and you can just load up, like, Double Lightning Bolt, Crackle, Lava Burst. <laughs> so you just load that. <laughs> well, assuming you know it's coming. He might just be tempted to play it. 
<laughs> if it's a curve, he played defender of Argus. Yeah. But Raynad hasn't exactly been playing a curve. He's been, he's been playing to maximize his hero power as mm -hmm. best as he can. Which you sort of have to do. In, well, in most matchups. Shaman, I think it's really good. Because you said before, matches his hero power. You have a bunch of 1-1s to deal with 0-2s. Warrior as well. Because it can be problematic. Sure. Um, ooh. Well, he's going to do it, it seems. Yep. Clean up some of these 1-1s one with the one weapon. Lotheb builds up a pretty strong board. And, well, half the hand to phrase our spells. Crackle. Jeez, so much damage. The thing about this deck, though, is... <gasps> oh! Alright. Okay. I was not expecting that card. In the back of my mind, I wondered if he played it. Yeah. But I really didn't even expect it whatsoever. I was literally just about to say, it just seems like he... Like, how do you get out? How do you get out Malagos and then ha have have it be safe for a turn so for you to be able to load up? You Ancestor's Call, and then Malagos, and you have... Six mana to play other spells. You can Lava Burst, Crackle, Well, you have to play. Lightning Bolt. You How have to empty your hand with creatures first. Right, so you have to play the uh, Heal Bot here, right? Or How much damage is that? Okay, so Lava Burst is base five. Let's say Crackle's three, Lightning Bolt's three, and other Lightning Bolt's three. You can play all four of those spells for ten mana, right? So three, Lava Burst ten, five. Lightning Bolt eight, second Lightning Bolt eight. So that's No, you only can play one Lightning Bolt. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's uh it's still it's at least mana. twenty six damage. So it's five, five. so three spells is fifteen, twenty, twenty three, twenty six damage. Yeah, at least twenty six damage. At least with the possibility of scale of thirty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and <laughs> oh man. Oh my God! Is that really what's gonna happen? Antique heal pot. Does Raynad realize that he might just die next turn? I don't think so. I mean, he might just lay on hands this turn, but even if he lay on hands uh, and puts himself at 30... I think 30, he's going to consecrate. I think he's going to consecrate and then attack, and he's dead. Unless Phrase draws into a, a creature, and oh, he doesn't draw Malagos. Right. But right now, Dude. if he draws into anything other than a creature... Raynan is about to get 360 windmill slammed on. <laughs> He's thinking about oh it. Oh my god. He's wondering because the shaman has six cards in it. Right. He's gotta oh, be actually, that's, that's true. He's gotta be suspicious. It's like why would you do that? Yeah. He's thinking what could he possibly have with six cards? Like that Rock he wouldn't Biter, play. Doctor uh, Wait, no. Double Doom Hammer. No, because last turn was Lotheb. You, there's no way you can expect this. Well, because I, last like, turn was low with them too, so he was probably just thinking, oh, he's locked out of spells, he has to play something. Are you ready, TJ? Oh, no. His only hope right now is if he draws into a creature and can't no, Ancestral's it's, it's Call to Malagos. It's not going to be a minion. It's going to be, like, another spell. All right, are you ready? Oh, are you ready? Oh, yes. Watch Raynad's Rain face Ed. closely. You are not prepared. Oh, come on. You, you've... This is the moment you've been waiting for, Fraze. You've done the math in your head ten times. Just do it. Oh! Eight damage! <laughs> oh, ten damage! No way. <laughs> oh my god. No way. That is <laughs> unbelievable. You can't even be mad. Oh yes, you can. He oh, smiled. Oh yes, you can. A that's small, not a smile. That's like a. That's contempt. Yeah. It's okay. like it's the way cats feel about humans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> wow. They yeah. sometimes even help you draw. Yeah. And maybe they even summon Mali Ghost through Death's Lord. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You don't even need Ancestral's Call. That's a really good starting hand from Phrase. Actually, probably with some of the best that you could ask for. Yeah, as far as this deck goes. Because I think the only early creatures that he runs are Haunted Creepers. And probably just because they're really sticky. Leopard Gnome, also sticky in different ways. 
Grenade, of course. Oh, New Ruby Neg is pretty good and strong insurance against uh, Lightning Storm. It's one of these things where Raynad's playing a fast deck, so that way a burst combo deck can't assemble the pieces at the time. Yeah. A lot of times he'll have to use some of those pieces for his burst just yeah. to be able to stabilize. And uh, this deck against the aggro, I think it'd take a little bit longer to close out a game. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll see. We'll see for sure. Uh, Raynad also has like some good ways to slip to play it with the Ruby and Egg and then uh, Dire Wolf Alpha to slowly push it in. See, Frey is actually thinking about whether or not he should play Haunted Creeper or not. Uh, I feel like I feel like it's definitely the case you want to play it. It sets up so that way you have good support for your Pharaoh Spirits. Yeah, what what would Hero Power gain him in this situation? Well, if you gain the Taunt Totem, it gives you ability to uh, be resilient against the board. If you get the Healing Totem. You also have the ability to have Feral Spirits. And a healing totem. Healing totem. Synergy. That's really beneficial. Well, so you want to kill off this, this spider too, so that's one more. I suppose it is worth some thought, but I definitely think Honda Creeper is the way to go. Sure. Well, I think Lothab is going to be a pretty big piece here. There's a possibility that he'll play it for the board, but... Actually, yeah. I think he'll just play it for the board. And to gain the, the tempo. Because he won't find himself in a situation where Malagos comes out and he's going to be worried about dying the next turn. Right. Usually by that turn, turn 10 at the least, the game is close to being decided in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, positioning probably could have been proved a little bit for Raynet, but it's a somewhat, it's pretty irrelevant considering that the 1 1 will most indefinitely trade into this Lepaku, you know, but say if it didn't. It would have been the case where the Direwolf Alpha should have been uh, placed between those so you can trade into the wolves. So it didn't end up mattering, but something that to keep in note yep. when you're playing so you do have to position correctly. It's it I, I would be really surprised if it wasn't Feral Spirits. Feral Spirits is just so strong on a board with just such low stats like this. It makes his next turn not the greatest, but I mean, you play Feral Spits on turn three. There's not much else you're going to be able to do as a shaman besides Haunted Creeper or Hero Power, oh especially my. this deck. Mm. Well, he, he trades into it, so how does that affect things? He's got Lothep, by the way, in Zoo. That's an interesting choice from Raynad. I wonder I like if he's Lothab. opting to play Undertaker and then uh, trade, activate the egg, and then freeze a minion so that way his Undertaker doesn't get guaranteed kill off here. Yeah. And it, it dumps his hand, so pretty reasonable. I think Lothab in uh, Zoo is actually really strong. Well, against this deck, it's really strong. Well, I think it gets a lot of decks. Right. It's just specifically against a deck that requires a lot of spell burst. Yeah. Sometimes they can just straight up secure you a win. If you have a big board... Sure. And you're playing against a class, which many classes rely on spells as mm -hmm. their removal. Um, then you can just secure a board that's already really strong, and just an extra turn could be enough to just come straight up win you the game. Yeah. This oh. Freezing the Haunted Creep. It's just denying him one once for the next turn. Yeah, because that would have t traded into. Well, it's the <laughs> it's either losing your dire wolf oh, or losing he, your. Oh, because he wants him to. He, he thinks he's going to kill the undertaker off, so then he trades the token in. Gotcha. And then, um, so the tokens can't kill the two one, because if he if he didn't freeze that, the tokens kill the two one, and then he'd be in an awkward spot where he had to trade like the undertaker and the dire wolf. That's actually a very advanced play. Uh, yep, the lightning bolt ends up making a problem anyways. Smart play, just doesn't pay off. Yep. 
Well, this isn't the most ideal situation to use Lilith Ebb, but at the end of the day, it's still 5-5. Five, five. Big draw. Lightning Storm. I would have to imagine you have run two Lightning Storms in this deck, for sure. Yeah. Because that way, you know you can Ancestors call double Lightning Storm <laughs> for a massive Whoa. AoE clear. That's a big draw, too. The second ans the second Nerubian Egg to you be would, good against. You would never even need a double Lightning Storm. I know. But, but maybe that Ysera is really hard to kill. <laughs> That's true. So, Lightning Storm. If it rolls low, you're going to be in trouble. If it rolls low on Lotheb, excuse me. It's guaranteed to kill everything on the board. And, of course, you can Crackle as well. But if that rolls low, Hex Lightning Storm is as a guaranteed clear on the board. Well, I think you can Lightning Storm and then just Lava Burst the Nerubian and just throw your 1-1 one -one into the... But then you're like so overloaded. Ooh, and then there's a possi no, no, there's not a possibility. You're you're just crazy overloaded. You do save the hex for crackle. Save the hex for uh, what's its name? Doom Guard. All right, here we go. Lightning storm. If it rolls low on Lothab, ah, it rolls oh, high. Uh, crackle is a seventy-five percent chance to kill here too. Even if he doesn't, he's still got a little bit of insurance. Time. Mm. <laughs> Does he want to fit the curve? It, he's going to be 4 Overlord next turn if he plays Lava Burst. I mean, he'll still have enough mana for Hex at the, yeah. the least here. And I guess Crackle has more potential damage, and it also... Is yeah, I suppose so. A lot more, uh, potentially more cost efficient. Why do you fall? So Zoo resets, no Doom Guard. He did save it on the off chance that he gets Doom Guard, he can hex. Crackle will allow him to push through. Oh. Okay, so four. If we take that logic and said he would have gotten four anyways. Would have been maybe he would have been able to. Yep. Yeah. We've still been able to uh, kill off that Nerubian. Well, it seems like he's just trying to outlast here. I mean, we did see a lot of big creatures in his deck. Right. Um, like Fire Elemental and or he, double Fire Elemental. I mean, look, Asher he's Drakes. eventually it's going to be the case where Azu might just keep killing itself, and he might yeah. be able to burst him down. Very true. Because I mean, even just an ancestral's call right now is. Well, he'd have to get rid of the Defender of Argus, but it would be 10 damage from Lava Burst. Holds on to the Undertaker just to evaluate if his opponent had Lightning Storm. He needs to have some kind of momentum in case he gets crushed, but no second Lightning Storm. Ah, the board is pretty scary. It's got 7, 10 damage already. You can shoot two of it off. Shoot the buff. Wardwalker here, probably the huge Wardwalker, <laughs> who looks very that similar a to a fire elemental. Huh? It does. Direwolf Alpha is a pretty nice draw too. Ooh, still no Doom Guard, but interestingly enough, it's also a blessing in disguise because he doesn't lose like the tempo or the cards. Yeah. I don't. I don't also think that he's playing Sea Giants or Implosions. I know Raynat's also been a very vocal player about saying how he doesn't think Implosion is that great. <laughs> he says in almost every other matchup, you'd rather have Dark Iron Door. I can see where it's coming from. Yeah, he just says that you'd rather have the four four instead of the one ones for the two damage. Whoa! Mali Ghost. I mean, Mali Ghost would force a lot of poor trades. <laughs> Because he might just die if he doesn't kill it. How much damage are you facing at the other end? 7, 9, 12, 13 damage. But do you think he can try and just clear the defender out of your hand and hope for a spell next turn? Because if he gets a spell next turn, crack or one of the lightning bolt, or lightning bolt, second crackle. Right, he would kill him. He would kill him. Right, so that's why I'm saying the Mali Ghost might just be a, a huge magnet, a lightning rod of damage. Oh, so you're saying you should play the Malgos now just to force trades? I, f I felt like that. But then would he 
Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, because what you, I said you could have played uh, Ancestor's Call and then Defender of Argus. Yeah. That's what I thought the play was, but I guess he'd rather play this so that way he can get the guaranteed kill. Oh, well, uh, Ancestor's Call might have pulled the Defender of Argus. Hmm. Oh, you're right. Ah, that's a good point. Ancestor's Call pulling out the Defender of Argus would have been a bad case. You're right. Yeah. So in that case, you're, uh, you can't do it. This is... I thought it, what an interesting deck. If he, if he draws a spell next turn, Raynad's dead, but at the same time... Right. If he doesn't... If he doesn't, then he's dead. So I think a lot of well, it's going to be on the next draw. Well, he might not be dead, but it's going to be close. I mean, he has... Well, yeah, he has to be very careful. But 9 damage is still enough. Um, he's, he's not going to be able to kill him this turn. And Reyna's doing some meticulous calculations on probably what's the best way to go about this. Most likely buffing this uh, this frog that's a little useless as well. Hoping for a juggle. He doesn't want to miss any points of damage. And he wants to well, he wants to keep his board open as well. That's a good juggle. But uh, now it's going to be down to the next draw. Oh no. If Reyna's gets it. What does he, he have? A ties it up. Crackle? No. Nope. Oh, I mean, he can draw into. I second. got really excited for a second because I sensed that it was gonna happen. He still can't even kill him, even if he gets lucky on the 50-50. Lava burst would do 10 damage. I think his only out here is to Azure Drake into second lightning storm. Three, four, three, four, six, nine, ten, twelve damage right now. There's a lot of ways to be able to do two damage. Well, maybe not so much anymore. Doom well, Guard, Doom Guard, Dark Iron Dwarf, another abusive sergeant, Defender of Arch number two. I uh, use both abusive sergeants, I believe. Oh, has he? Okay. Uh, any anything to if he juggles and buffs Undertaker simultaneously, he might have the lava burst here. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Some burst gone from the hand. And I think you toss the Thanos just to draw. Yep. But does, I think Doomguard off the top still kills him. Oh boy. Now he's worried about if he taps and he dies. <laughs> Which is possible, because the Ancestor's Call crackled. Oh, Flame Imp is terrible. Yikes. <laughs> Alright, he, he can't play Flame Imp. Without risking it completely opposite way. Malagos, if it if it draws lightning bolt, he's still going to be short a few points of damage. If he draws crackle, though, yeah. it's potentially lethal. You're right. Second crackle. Oh my god, that'd be so crazy. Oh my goodness. Comes down to this draw. No, no. it's not. Oh, he's still got he's still got an opportunity. No, he's overloaded. Oh, he's overloaded. No. Oh! If he had ten mana, he could do it. That's heartbreaking. Oh, is this the end of Fraser's run? Three, six, seven damage. Anything to buff the Undertaker. Oh, no. That's going to be it. All That's right. enough damage right there. What an insane game. It was so close, and Freyze almost came back with Ancestor's Call Shaman. This deck is cool. My favorite my favorite series of the day so far. One card one card I, away. I really wanted to see that Mally Ghost deck win again, because it's like... <sighs> Well, it's got potential one, still. It was one turn away. One turn away from happening. Wow. Well, Randy.